Investors set to gain some new insight into the Fed's thinking when minutes from the latest rate decision meeting are released this afternoon. Joining us right now on that and on the current push for U.S. banks to hold more capital is former Fed Vice Chairman for Supervision, Randy Quarles. And Randy, let's let's talk through, first of all, what we should be digging into the FOMC minutes, what we, what we should be on the lookout for. What are you going to be watching? Uh, well, I, I think the the key issue is how the Fed is resolving the uncertainties with which this um, uh, inflation surge began. At the outset, there was good reason to think that interest rates wouldn't have to rise as high as they have in the past to contain this sort of inflation. And there was good reason to think they would, wouldn't have to stay as high for as long. Uh, and I think the first of those hypotheses is playing out. Interest rates have been much lower than traditional rules would have suggested to bring an inflation like this down. It's come down from over nine to averaging around three and coming down further. Um, but it's still not durably at the 2% target, which would suggest that the second hypothesis, that it wouldn't have to stay high for as long, uh, was wrong. Uh, uh, historically, it's taken a year or two for monetary policy to work its way through the system. Uh, it seems to be taking that long. And so what you want to look at is how is the F1C itself thinking about these two issues? Uh, are interest rates as high as they need to be? I think yes. Or, uh, will they take longer than had been thought and how much longer? Uh, I think the, that that's where the issue is and how the FMC is thinking about that should be uh, revealed by the minutes. Randy, the reason I really wanted to have you on today was to talk about something that's a little wonky, but I think is really important to our viewers, and that's what's happening with these new requirements uh, for the banks to hold more capital. Um, this is all happening under a supervisor who's only the second person to have this job since the role was appointed. You were the first one after the role was appointed um, post Dodd Frank. I, I just it seems like the banks are pushing back really hard on this. It seems like there is not any sort of unanimity at the Fed in terms of what should happen, uh, the risks that it could potentially pose internationally or the risks that it would pose if you didn't have that capital in terms of something happening again. Can you walk through your thinking on, on where things stand with the banks? How much capital do you think is the right amount? Sure. Um, well, the, the Fed's undertaking this uh, in response to uh, an international agreement called Basel III, uh, which is an, an international agreement on capital. These are the last measures uh, that the Fed is was in the process of implementing. Uh, but purportedly in response to SVB, uh, uh, the Fed has proposed to greatly Silicon increase- Silicon Valley banks to explosion, right? Yes, SBB, exactly. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. In response to the the stress on the regional banking system earlier in the year. So the Fed's greatly increased the calibration of their response. It's requiring up to 20 percent more capital from the largest banks, which is a lot. Um, and that'll increase the capital cost of uh, of banking activity generally. And in particular, there are aspects of this proposal that would increase the capital cost of certain relatively safe fee-making businesses like wealth advice. Firms like Morgan Stanley have gone to great lengths to make a much larger share of their activity. Uh, these safe fee-making activities like that, they're therefore much more stable, but we're now proposing to significantly increase the capital cost of those activities. Um, there are a lot of issues with that, which is the reason that it's so controversial uh, both within the Fed and, and within the banking industry. Uh, the large banks that are ha seeing their capital proposed to be raised so significantly weren't the problem in the spring. Uh, the constraining effect of those capital costs will reduce the financial system support for the real economy at a time when many, including me, think that a recession uh, uh, will be uh, uh, coming upon us as a result of monetary policy. And there are other issues as well. So a dramatic increase like that will drive activity out of the relatively strong and regulated banking system into the non-bank system. The non-bank system is an important uh, part of our financial system, but it has less capital. We have less visibility into where the risks are there. It will drive activity out of the United States. Foreign banks, especially Euro European banks, aren't doing this. They aren't requiring such high increases in capital for their largest banks. So we're unleveling the playing field internationally. And it'll drive activity out of these safer activities, such as wealth management, by increasing the capital cost of conducting them. And none of those effects pushing businesses out of pushing business out of safer activities out of the country out of the banking system is really good for financial stability uh, when the board passed its draft proposal on this it, it passed but only by a vote of four to two there have been serious reservations raised by just about everyone including chairman powell 
What, what do you think ultimately happens? Is there a watered-down version of, of the rules that get put in? Do you think things are rolled back? How, how, how do we end this? Well, you know, that would uh, that would typically be the process. So the Fed has put these uh, this proposal out for comment uh, and, you know, comments are coming in. And during that period, the, you know, the staff uh, and the governors will review all of the input and they'll uh, also there will be a lot of interaction uh, amongst them in order to resolve some of these concerns. Uh, and the question is, is just exactly how much will the Fed down calibrate this proposal? Uh, it is so, you know, the 20 percent increase in capital cost is so significant, uh, you'd have to down calibrate it a lot. I mean, the Europeans are essentially not increasing the aggregate uh, amounts of capital in their system by very much at all, at most by single digit percentage points. So it would require a significant change to level the playing field with the European banks, for example. Here, here's what I don't get. If this was an international agreement, how how come every country is kind of looking at it differently and implementing it differently. Is it just a different interpretation of what we agreed to? Uh, in some cases, it's a different interpretation. In some cases, the international agreement is uh, specifically stated to be a minimum and countries are free to go above it. Uh, in the first, this is the last piece of Basel III that's being implemented. And the first part of Basel III has already been implemented in the U.S., uh, significantly exceeded in, in many places the required calibration of the first part of Basel III. Uh, when, while I was there, we recalibrated that modestly uh, to, uh, uh, to result in a more of a tailored capital requirements for banks according to their size. And a lot of that is also would be removed by this proposal. If it's implemented, we have to run, Randy, but if it's implemented as proposed, your concern is it does what to the economy? What kind of a, a drag? Uh, uh, well, you know, I think it's, you know, direction, it's the wrong direction for what we ought to be doing for the financial system here. Now, it would come with, uh, you know, with uh, 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 phase in proposals. Uh, but the problem with phase in proposals to say, well, you won't actually have to have this capital for a while, is that if the market knows that uh, the regulators will require this capital, it will accelerate the period in which banks have to raise <laughs> that capital. Uh, so you have the immediate contractionary effect, in addition to the financial stability effects that I think are, are negative by pushing activity out of the U.S. And, and out of the banking system.